Welcome students. So far we have seen various tools to evaluate indefinite integrals. In the very beginning we started with antiderivative which were developed using the ideas of uh, differentiation of functions. Then we looked at the idea of integral using method of substitution. Then for some uh, rational functions we looked at the method of partial fractions and then we looked at the method of integration by parts where integrand was written as product of two functions. With these tools we have evaluated several examples, we have seen how to evaluate them. In this lecture we shall use all those tools to evaluate certain integrals and we will be doing these examples which will be involving all of these concepts. Earlier when we were solving example mostly we were aware that this example is dependent on this particular idea, but now we will choose the examples and looking at example uh, we will decide that which method we should use. Here I must tell you that a particular example may be solved by another method, a different method and I may be solving it a, with a different method. So, it choice is yours uh, depending on a particular example you can choose which method you want to select. Sometimes it is possible that a example may be solved by multiple methods. So, looking at an example you choose a method, you apply it, try and solve it. So, you practice with the problems and then once you are practiced then you will figure out that looking at example or after solving it for a couple of uh, lines you will realize that which method you should apply. So, let us look at miscellaneous examples. So, we will start with a very simple example to evaluate integral e raise to power x plus e raise to power minus x dx. So, since denominator is having the sum of e raise to power x and e raise to power minus x, we should look at the ideas which we have learned what, what uh, we should do, how to find out. It, it is not any derivative of a function which can be directly found, but if we change the form of function a bit and that we know that e raise to power minus x can be written as 1 over e raise to power x and therefore, this integral will take the form of e raise to power x over e raise to power 2 x plus 1 d x. Now, this form looks more comfortable than the earlier one. So, if we closely look at a form and convert into a form which looks more comfortable we can easily handle it. Why this is more comfortable because here it looks like I can use the method of substitution. This term has a factor exponential and exponential has the differentiation as exponential themselves and therefore, the numerator is having that, that as a factor. So, the idea of substitution will work and if I make the substitution e raise to power x as t, then what I will get is that e raise to power x dx as dt. So, this example converts into the simple form of dt over t square plus 1 because e raise to power 2 x is nothing but e raise to power x squared and this formula we know using the antiderivative is that nothing but tan inverse t substituting back t into e raise to power x, we will get tan inverse e raise to power x plus constant of integration. So, you can see how easily we have solved this by converting it into a problem uh, where a substitution worked and then converting into an integral of the known form. So, we shall look at some more examples uh, where this conversion can be possible or some more simplification of the functions can be possible. So, look at this example, find out the integral of say cos 2 x over cos x plus sin x square plus 
squared dx. If I look at this integrand, then immediately substitution uh, probably will not work. But if I use trigonometrical identity, which I know for the numerator of the integrand cos 2 x, I can write it as cos square x minus sin square x. Then I figure out it will be written as cos square x minus sin square x into divided by cos x plus sin x squared dx. Now, if I look at the integrand, I can see that there is a factor in cos x plus sin x squared and here I can factorize it so that it will get cancelled. So, ultimately I can write it as cos x minus sin x into cos x plus sin x divided by cos x plus sin x squared. So, this is square would get cancelled with this term. So, I am left with cos x minus sin x over cos x plus sin x. This integral can be easily evaluated. If I look carefully that what is the denominator and what is the numerator. So, denominator has function sin x and cosine x, sin x has derivative as cosine x and cos x has derivative as minus sin x. So, it looks the part of the numerator, I mean the numerator is actually nothing but the differentiation of the denominator. So, I can choose sin x plus cos x that is denominator as a new variable t. So, that cos x minus sin x whole d x is equals to d t. So, making the substitution I will get as d t over t which is nothing but logarithmic of mod t plus constant and this I can substitute back my t value, t value is nothing but sin x plus cos x and plus constant. So, we obtained this uh, result, this integration by making trigonometrical identities and simplifying them and ultimately we see that we these, these functions which we obtained after simplification they are integrable and the integral can be found. Another example I have chosen here for you to show you how trigonometrical identities they can be handy for a very complex looking uh, problem. So, take this as an example. Suppose that we are to integrate sin raised to power 8 x minus cos sin raised to power 8 x over 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square x dx. So, this is our integrand. So, here you see sin raised to power 8 x minus cos sin raised to power 8 x divided by 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square x. So, it is a very complex looking function, but if we use uh, uh, some relationship which we already know, then we can figure out that this can be converted into a simpler function. I will show you how. So, first of all when you are looking at sin raised to power 8 x minus cos sin raised to power 8 x, the first idea which, come, which should come to your mind is that can we convert it into a form which is a square minus b square, because that form we know how to factorize a square minus b square equals to a plus b into a minus b. So, let us look at the term uh, sin to power 8 can be written as sin 4 x square minus cos 4 x square, which can be written as sin 4 x minus cos 4 x into sin 4 x plus cos 4 x. Here I have used the formula a square minus b square is equals to a minus b into a plus b. 
this further same can be used here sin square square minus cos square square. So, that it can further be written as sin square x minus cos square x into sin squared x plus cos squared x into sin raised to power 4 x plus cos raised to power 4 x. You know sin square x plus cos square x is 1. So, you put it as uh, sorry I missed x here. So, you put sin square x plus cos square x as 1 and then you write everything in terms of cos. So, here instead of sin square x I will write it as 1 minus cos square x. So, that I will get 1 minus 2 cos square x multiplied by sin raised to power 4 that also I will write as 1 minus cos square x whole square because sin to power 4 can be written as sin square square and sin square is 1 minus cos square whole square plus cos raised to power 4 x. This further can be written as 1 minus 2 cos square x. Here this can be written as 1 plus cos to power 4 x minus 2 cos square x plus cos raised to power 4 x and which ultimately is written as 1 minus 2 cos square x 1 plus 2 cos raised to power 4 x minus 2 cos squared x. So, this is what is our numerator. Now, let us look at the denominator and do the same uh, technique here. So, denominator 1 minus 2 sin square x cos square x. So, as in the numerator everybody I have written in terms of cos here also I want to write it in terms of cos. So, I will write it as 1 minus 2 times 1 minus cos square x into cos square x which will give me 1 minus 2 times cos square x minus minus plus. So, 2 times cos square cos square cos raised to power 4 x. Now, look at these two factors numerator this is your numerator. So, numerator 1 minus 2 cos square x 1 plus 2 cos raised to power 4 x minus 2 cos square x and denominator it is having that factor which is there in the numerator 1 minus 2 oh sorry I missed a plus yeah minus and minus plus. So, 1 minus 2 cos square x plus cos raised to power 4 x. So, 1 minus 2 cos square x plus 2 cos raised to power 4 x. So, this term will get cancelled when we simplify it. So, integrand i is written as 1 minus 2 cos square x that is numerator into this term divided by the denominator which is same therefore, these two terms will get cancelled. So, I do not need to write them I will just write them d x. Now, you can easily evaluate this integral. So, first term integral x minus 2 times cos square x. So, for the square cos functions we have to convert it into linear function. We know that cos 2 x is equals to 2 cos square x minus 1. Therefore, cos square x is nothing but 1 plus cos 2 x by 2. So, I replace this 1 plus cos 2 x by 2 d x. So, ultimately I get this 2 gets cancelled with this 2 minus integration of 1 is again x and then integration of cos 2 x is nothing but minus of integration of cos 2 x will be sin 2 x by 2 plus a constant. So, this x gets cancelled with this x. Uh, you can still be uh, I mean write it the same form as it is here or you can write sin 2 x you know 2 sin x cos x therefore, this can be written as 
minus of sin x cos x plus constant. So, using trigonometrical identities we saw that this function uh, th this integrand uh, can be written into a very simpler form which further converted again using another trigonometrical identity and then simply it is evaluated. We shall further look at some more example, uh, certain other class of examples. Suppose that we have to evaluate the integral of the kind dx over a plus b sin squared x. or for that matter let me call it as i 1, you have to evaluate integral d x over a cos square x plus b sin squared x, where a and b are some constants which are suitably chosen. <coughs> now, uh, you can see that this problem can be converted into this problem by choosing cos square x as 1 minus sin square x and then simplifying and then choosing some new a and b. So, accordingly the problem can be chosen. So, we will be looking at how to solve the problem of the kind d x upon a plus b sin square x. Uh, first thing we should come to mind is that convert into a form where we can use some of our techniques which we have already learnt. One of the way will be to divide both the numerator and denominator by cos square x. So, that in the numerator we will get sec square x and in the denominator we will get a sec square x plus b tan square x. If I do that, uh, what I realize here is that, that the numerator gets sec square x and if I substitute tan x as another new variable, then sec square x dx will become that dt. Only problem will be with this sec square x, but fortunately we have a relationship that 1 plus tan square x is nothing but sec square x. So, in the denominator we shall replace sec square x as 1 plus tan square x sec square x dx a 1 plus tan square x. So, a plus a plus b tan square x using the formula sec square x is equal to 1 plus tan square x and then make the substitution tan x equals to t. So, that sec square x dx equals to dt. So, we get this integral as d t divided by a plus a plus b sorry a plus b times tan x is t. So, a plus b times t is squared. So, this is close to the form d t by t square plus a square only thing is that we need to take a plus b as common. So, if we take that a plus b as common 1 by a plus b as common in the denominator, the form will be converted into d t upon a by a plus b plus t squared. Uh, this is now well known formula, if I write a plus b is equals to alpha square 1 by a plus b integration if I think this a plus b as alpha squared, so I can use the formula here, so that it will become 1 by a plus b, 1 by alpha tan inverse t by alpha, uh, which after this small substitution will plus constant, which after this small substitution a plus b 1 by alpha will make it square root of a plus b divided by square root of a tan inverse square root of 
a plus b times t divided by square root of a plus constant, which finally, after little uh, simplification, you can write it as 1 by square root of a into a plus b into tan inverse t root of a plus b over root a plus constant. So, depending on a and b, uh, suppose in a problem, particular problem, it is given that a is having some value, b is having some other value. So, you can simply figure out that what will be the integral or if form is given in this form, then also you can figure out the, the, the value of the integral. Next, we choose another example for you. So, suppose that we have to find out the integral of sin inverse 2 x upon 1 plus x squared d x. So, as there is no other factor present here, uh, what we should use here is that, that there is one way one can use a substitution for x, you can put some substitution or the other way is that, that you check the idea uh, which you have already used for, uh, for the example of uh, inverse function uh, by considering here that this is written as 1 multiplied by sin inverse 2 x upon 1 plus x square. So, let us try and see what happens if I choose it this way. Since it is a inverse trigonometric function, therefore, I must consider this as first function and this 1 being algebraic function, I must consider as second function. So, integration by parts I am going to apply here. So, if I apply this integration by parts, what I am going to get is that sin inverse 2 x upon 1 plus x square that is first function integration of the second. So, integration of 1 will give me x minus integration differentiation of sin inverse. So, I know that differentiation of sin inverse x is 1 by square root of 1 minus x square. So, I will write it as 1 by square the root of 1 minus. So, instead of x it is 2 x over 1 plus x square whole square. Then multiplied by since it is this factor. So, I have to take the derivative of this factor. So, differentiation of d by d x of 2 x over 1 plus x square. So, so far first function integration of the second minus integral differentiation of the first and then integration of the second. So, integration of the second will give you x dx. Now, I have to find out what is the d by dx for 2 x upon 1 plus x square. So, this let me find out separately d by dx of 2 x upon 1 plus x square. So, it is of the form numerator over denominator. So, this will give me 1 plus x square into differentiation of 2 x will give me 2 minus 2 x into differentiation of 1 plus x square will give me 2 x divided by 1 plus x square whole square. This is 2 plus 2 x square minus 4 x square, which will give me 2 minus 2 x square, which ultimately I can write 2 into 1 minus x square divided by 1 plus x squared whole square. So, the derivative this term I now have the value I will write it here x sin inverse 2 x upon 1 plus x square minus integration. I have this term now here 1 minus this will become 4 x square. So, the denominator I will evaluate separately 1 minus 4 x square over 1 plus x square whole square. So, this is the term here. I will write it as square root of 1 plus x square whole square minus 4 x square divided by 1 plus x square whole square, which I can write as see here 1 plus x square. So, if I open the whole square, I will get 1 plus 
x raised to power 4 plus 2 x square minus 4 x square will make it minus 2 x square. So, that I will get 1 minus x square whole square. So, the numerator will become 1 minus x square whole square over 1 plus x square whole squared and ultimately I will get it as 1 minus x square over 1 plus x square. So, this uh, term in the denominator becomes 1 minus x square over 1 plus x square. So, I will make this substitution for this denominator term. So, this I will get as 1 over 1 minus x square over 1 plus x square. This multiplied by the differentiation here which I have already got 2 times 1 minus x square over 1 plus x square whole square and then ultimately this x dx. So, I will put it x here and then finally dx here. So, look at it carefully some terms are getting cancelled for example, this 1 minus x square is getting cancelled with 1 minus x square 1 plus x square getting cancelled with 1 of the 1 plus x square. So, ultimately this becomes x sin inverse 2 x over 1 plus x square minus x over 1 plus x square dx. Again I can take this 1 plus x square as a as a, as a new variable t. So, that t x 2 x dx is dt. So, x dx will be dt by 2 which I can directly write at a logarithmic. You can evaluate it. So, x sin inverse 2 x upon 1 plus x square minus half logarithmic of mod of 1 plus x square plus constant. So, this way after evaluating these terms we can get uh, these results. Sometimes it becomes very handy when you use some substitution for the values in inverse trigonometric functions. For example, one can look at here uh, by choosing let us say x is equals to tan theta and see what happens with this particular example. I will choose another example for you to show that how it evolves if we use that kind of substitution of uh, another variable. So, choosing the example of integration of cos inverse twice of x square minus 1 dx. So, this is cos inverse 2 x square minus 1. So, instead of going the way I have solved it in the previous example, I will make a substitution as x is equals to cos theta. So, that dx is equals to minus of sin theta d theta. So, the integral i takes its form as cos inverse 2 cos square theta minus 1 minus sin theta d theta. Now, this term is cos inverse of this fellow, but I know the formula trigonometrical relations if 2 cos square theta minus 1 is cos 2 theta. Therefore, cos inverse cos 2 theta will be nothing but twice of theta cos inverse cos 2 theta is nothing but twice of theta and then minus of sin theta d theta. So, this is same as minus 2 integration of sin theta theta d theta. I can now use uh, integration by parts assuming this as first function and this being the trigonometric as second function. So, it will give me minus of 2 theta sin theta has integration as minus of cos theta minus integration theta as differentiation 1 and sin theta has integration as minus of cos theta d theta which will finally give me minus minus plus 2 theta cos theta then minus 2. So, it will become minus minus plus and then this minus will make it minus 2 integration of cos theta integration of cos theta is nothing but sin theta and a constant of integration. So, these substitutions now they will help us in getting back to the original value. So, cos theta is x and theta is equal to cos inverse x. So, 2 x cos inverse x from here minus 2 sin theta. So, sin theta will be square the root of 1 minus cos square theta 
So, 2 square root of 1 minus cos square theta that is 1 minus x square and plus a constant of integration. So, with the substitution of uh, when we are given inverse trigonometric functions uh, with the substitution of one variable into the trigonometric uh, function, it sometimes helps to convert the integrand into another simpler form which we can easily evaluate. Uh, we will see this further in some more examples. Let us choose the following example. So, let us take this example i is equals to integration of tan inverse root of 1 minus x over 1 plus x dx. To solve this example, we will use as we have used in the previous case. Only thing which we have to keep in mind is that, that we should make the substitution of x in such a way that this entire term converts into a tan function. So, that this tan inverse with that tan function get cancelled uh, that I should keep in mind. So, uh, look at this form 1 minus x over 1 plus x. So, I should use a formula where these ones should get cancelled. So, if you, if you notice and uh, if you check then you have the formula for cos 2 theta in two different form you can write it as 1 minus 2 sin square theta or you can also write it as 2 cos square theta minus 1. So, if I make a substitution of x is equals to cos 2 theta, I notice that 1 minus x over 1 plus x I can write as 1 minus and then here since I am writing it I have to cancel this one. So, I should use this formula. So, 1 minus 2 sin square theta over 1 plus 2 cos square theta minus 1. So, carefully if you look at it what you ultimately get here is this one gets cancelled, uh, uh, this one also gets cancelled. In the numerator you will get sin square theta, in the denominator you will get cos square theta because 2 also gets cancelled with 2. So, you will get sin square theta over cos square theta. So, 1 plus x over 1, 1 minus x over 1 plus x becomes sin square theta over cos square theta which is nothing but tan square theta and this is what was our aim. So, making this substitution x is equals to cos 2 theta which will give you dx is equals to minus of 2 sin 2 theta d theta. So, making this substitution we find that the integrand i can be written as tan inverse square root of this fellow is tan theta tan inverse tan theta multiplied by dx that is minus 2 sin 2 theta d theta. So, I can take this minus 2 outside of the integral tan inverse tan will give me theta sin 2 theta and d theta. This again is of the form of previous problem. So, I will assume this as first and this as second function and then evaluate use integration by parts will not solve it completely. Use integration by parts to evaluate this integral and then ultimately convert from theta to x by using the relationship. So, you can see that simplification helps when you solve problems. Uh, by making certain substitutions which uh, will make problem into a simpler form. Another problem uh, of similar kind I will choose for you is this one. Suppose that we are only given this function to evaluate 1 minus root x over 1 plus root x dx. So, from previous example uh, you should at least get some idea that that what can be the substitution because it's a 1 minus and then 1 plus. So, uh, I think you can easily guess that I should try square root x is equals to cos 2 theta. So, that 1 minus root x upon 1 plus root x 
as we did in the previous problem for this will come 1 minus cos 2 theta over 1 plus cos 2 theta. In the numerator I will use the sine function, in the denominator I will use the cosine function. So, that I will get it as sin square theta over cosine square theta. Just as in the previous problem we did, we use substitute it using that the relationship. So, for numerator you use cos theta is equals to 1 minus 2 sin square theta and for the denominator cos theta you use 2 cos square theta minus 1. So, you will get the same term. So, here uh, if I take the differential what I will get is that 1 by 2 root x dx is equals to minus of sin 2 theta into 2 times d theta root x is already known to me as cos theta therefore, I can put it as d x is equals to minus 4 root x is cos 2 theta. So, cos 2 theta sin 2 theta d theta let us for the time being write it as 2 cos 2 theta sin 2 theta as sin 4 theta d theta. So, we have evaluated this term and this is tan square theta. So, the integrand i will be converted into integral of square root of tan square theta that is tangent of theta multiplied by minus 2 sin 4 theta and then d theta. So, if you look at the evaluation it does not look that we can immediately evaluate it. So, we have to go for further use of trigonometrical relationship. So, 2 times integrals this tan theta I can write it in terms of sin theta upon cos theta multiplied by sin 4 theta which I will write as 2 sin 2 theta cos 2 theta d theta. So, this will become minus 4 further you know you can write sin 2 theta as 2 sin theta cos theta. So, that sin theta over cos theta multiplied by this 2 to the 4 is already there 2 sin theta cos theta to cos 2 theta d theta. So, this cos theta gets cancelled and what you are left with is minus 8 4 to the 8 minus 8 sin square theta cos square theta cos square theta sin theta sin theta sin square theta cos square theta d theta. Now, you can solve it however you want to, but one of the simplest way probably is that that you convert into sin 2 theta. So, it will become if I take minus 2 integration I write here 4 sin square theta cos square theta and this nothing but 2 sin theta cos theta that is sin 2 theta whole square sin square 2 theta d theta again you use the formula cos 2 theta is equals to 1 minus 2 sin square theta. So, here put theta is equals to 2 theta so that you will get 1 minus sorry so that you will get uh, sin square 2 theta as 1 minus cos of 4 theta divided by 2. So, replace this minus 2 integration of 1 minus cos of 4 theta divided by 2 d theta. So, ultimately this 2 gets cancelled and you will get here minus theta minus minus plus integration of cosine will give you sin of 4 theta divided by 4 and plus a constant of integration. And the assumption which you took was square root of x was cos 2 theta. So, sin 4 theta must be written into 2 sin 2 theta cos 2 theta. So, that way you can convert so that here you will have theta is equals to 1 half of cos inverse root x 
and uh, I mean similarly you can look for this uh, sin theta, you write it as square root of 1 minus cos square theta, sin 2 theta as 1 minus cos square 2 theta and then convert this using this root x. So, because cos theta is equal to root x, so you can finally write it as 1 minus x. So, simplify it further to get the final answer and you can evaluate it now here using sin 4 theta as 2 sin 2 theta cos 2 theta and then substituting back the values of these thetas. So, now I will move to another class of simple problems where a specific kind of function many times written with the exponential function e raised to power x f x plus f prime x d x. So, if we are to evaluate this kind of problem, uh, many times it becomes very helpful if uh, the product with exponential is written and we can recognize that, that the product which is written with exponential can be written in this form f x plus f prime x. I will show you with an example. So, to evaluate this we break it into two parts. Let us say what happens e raised to power f x d x plus integration e raised to power x f prime x d x. Consider this as i 1 and this as i 2 and check for i 1. So, i 1 is e raised to power x f x d x and evaluate it using by parts considering this as first function and this as second function. So, the integral will come out to be f x e raised to power x minus integration differentiation of the first f prime x integration of the second e raised to power x d x and plus of course, constant of integration which finally, will appear there. So, now you can see that this is nothing but uh, i 2 and therefore, i 1 is f x e raised to power x minus i 2 plus c. So, the integral i now is written as i 1 for which the value is f x into e raised to power x minus i 2 plus i 2 plus c which gets cancelled. So, finally, the integral i turns out to be e raised to power x f x. So, if a problem is of this kind that it is having exponential function and the product is written uh, with exponential as f x plus f prime x, it becomes very easy to evaluate and we can directly use the formula that it is nothing but e raised to power x f x plus constant c. I will choose a simple example first, very simple example for this application of this property. So, choose this integral e raised to power x 1 by x minus 1 by x square d x. So, you can I think easily figure out that if 1 by x is f x, then minus 1 by x square is nothing but f prime x and therefore, the integral of this should come out to be f x e raised to power x. So, the integral is 1 by x e raised to power x plus constant. So, this is the answer which you can see using the formula in one line. You can also verify it by making the evaluation. So, write i as integration e raised to power x into 1 by x d x minus integration e raised to power x 1 by x square d x. Evaluate this integral using this as first function and this as second function. So, what you will get here is that the, the, this as first function. So, 1 by x e raised to power x minus integration differentiation of the first is 1 by x square with a negative sign. Therefore, it will make it plus e raised to power x. So, integral as e raised to power x d x minus integration e raised to power x upon x square d x and plus finally, a constant of integration. So, these two terms gets cancelled which finally, gives you e raised to power x upon x plus constant with the same term which you got here using that formula. So, that means that this formula uh, becomes very handy and helpful when we solve uh, the kind of examples. Uh, sometimes it may not be given, the problem may not be given directly in that form, but 
after certain substitution, uh, we can get it in that form. So, let us look at a uh, couple of examples where we can make those substitutions. So, take this example i equals to integration of log of log of x dx, sorry, log of log of x plus 1 by log x squared, this is squared dx. So, suppose that we have to evaluate this integral. So, now, since it is so many logarithmic functions are appearing here, a natural choice seems that I should substitute log x to be some new variable and see what actually happens. So, if I put log x is equals to t, immediately I can see that 1 by x dx equals to dt, but since there is no x appearing in this expression, therefore, I should try and solve it for that x. So, I know from logarithmic that uh, logarithmic and exponential are uh, inverse function to each other, therefore, log x is equals to t also implies that if I solve it x is equals to e raised to power t and therefore, this gives me d x equals to x e raised to power t which is uh, sorry x d t x d t which is nothing but x is e raised to power t and therefore, e raised to power d t. So, d x is equals to e raised to power d t. Now, let me make those substitutions in the integral. So, i becomes log of log x is t plus 1 by t is squared log of t plus 1 by t is squared and then this is e raised to power t d t. So, writing it in this form, I get it that e raised to power t log t d t plus e raised to power t by t square d t. So, so far this expression has been converted into form this form, uh, but directly I, I, I do not see the application of the formula which we have used in the previous problem. But what I can do here is that I can again use integration by parts for this factor. And since logarithmic is present here and therefore, I must choose this logarithmic as first function and this exponential as second function. So, if I do that I will get log t integration of e raised to power t is e raised to power t minus integration differentiation of log t is 1 by t integration of e raised to power t is e raised to power t d t plus integration e raised to power t upon t square d t. Now, let us club them together and see. So, e raised to power t log t minus integration e raised to power t 1 over t minus 1 over t square d t. Now, look at this factor. So, the problem initially involving logarithmic after use of the substitution and uh, integration by part took you to the problem which has the application of the formula which I told you. So, e raised to power 1 by t minus 1 by t square same problem which I solved in the previous example. So, you know that with the help of that example is that this is f t and this is f prime t therefore, the integration will be e raised to power t into f t plus constant. So, let us write that here e raised to power t log t minus the integral of this fellow will be e raised to power t into f t is 1 by t plus a constant. Putting the va values back t is equals to log x and x is equals to e raised to power t. So, e raised to power t is x log t is obviously log of t is log x minus e raised to power t is again x into 1 by t is 1 by log x 
and plus constant c. So, this is the, the solution or answers for this particular problem which we dealt with. So, substitution and application of this, this formula which we studied uh, leads to the solution of this particular problem. This is another simple problem for you which uses the same idea is to find out the integral of e raised to power x 1 plus sin x over 1 plus cos x. At first glance it does not look like a function and fits derivative, but if you look at it uh, carefully then you can see that you can convert it into a certain form and you will see that how we will do that one. So, first of all we will write this trigonometrical expression 1 plus sin x over 1 plus cos x and convert into using those uh, same angle formulas. So, 1 plus sin x I will write 1 I will write cos square x by 2 plus sin square x by 2 cos square x by 2 plus sin square x by 2 plus 2 sin x by 2 cos x by 2. So, this is 1 and this is sin x whole divided by 1 plus this cos x I will convert into 2 cos square x by 2 minus 1. So, that this one gets cancelled and what you will get here is that cos x by 2 plus sin x by 2 whole squared divided by cos square x by 2 1 by 2 here and introduce this cos x inside here. So, that you will get 1 half of 1 plus tan x by 2 whole squared. If you get uh, this term 1 plus tan x by 2 whole is squared. Now, we expand this function because still we did not reach to where we want to. So, now we expand this function in the following as 1 plus tan square x by 2 plus 2 tan x by 2. And notice that 1 plus tan square theta is nothing but sec square theta. So, that this becomes half sec square x by 2, 2 2 gets cancelled plus tan of x by 2. So, the trigonometric function which is in the integrand can be written in this form. Now, notice this factor. If I consider this as f x tan x by 2 as f x, then derivative of tan x by 2 is sec square x by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2. So, this factor is f prime x. So, after little manipulation we reach to that factor that that I can write integrand i equals to which is this fellow e raised to power x multiplied by this factor. So, this factor I have simply computed into this form I will write it as tan x by 2 plus half of sec square x by 2 and then dx. And now, I know this is f x, this is f prime x. Therefore, using the formula previous case e raised to power x f x plus f prime x will give you e raised to power x f x plus constant as the solution. So, you see this complicated looking problem and we simplified into certain using certain relationships we can get this one to here and then using that formula we solve it. So, that is the that is the answer for it. Finally, we shall look at one more example 1 plus x plus 1 plus x minus 1 by x e raised to power x plus 1 by x dx. In order to evaluate this integral you see we need to look at it from a different angle because if we choose x plus 1 by x as t directly it will give 1 minus 1 by x square dx is equals to dt which does not appear here. So, let us first break it into two parts q 
keep 1 separate and keep x minus 1 by x separate. So, that we can write it x plus 1 by x dx and uh, the second part we will write it as x minus 1 by x e raised to power x plus 1 by x dx. Now, we will try to deal with this second factor first and choose x plus 1 by x as some new variable t. So, that 1 minus 1 by x square dx equals to dt, which if I look at it carefully is same as x square minus 1 upon x square dx is equals to dt. Here if I look at this factor, so it gives me x square minus 1 upon x. So, what I need to do is that I multiply and divide by x so that I can get that factor, but that is not that is that is something which is which is at this moment is not present here. So, I will do that I will multiply and divide by that factor I will multiply by x and divide by x. So, if I do that what I will get here is x square minus 1 by x multiplied by x is x square. So, look at this carefully, leave this numerator x, right. Now, you can see that, that if you take this as t, then the, the part in the new uh, part in the integrand times dx is dt and therefore, the integral of this fellow is possible. So, I should consider it as second function x as first function and apply integration by parts that is the idea which. So, we will put it in this way e raised to our x plus 1 by x dx and then plus first function x integration of the second. So, it becomes e raised to power t and this entire factor will become dx times dt. So, integration of e raised to power t is the same as integration of uh, e raised to power t. So, it will be e raised to our x plus 1 by x you need to compute it separately. The claim is x minus 1 by x into 1 by x e raised to power x plus 1 by x dx is equals to e raised to power x plus 1 by x can be obtained by substituting this. So, this you need to separately calculate minus differentiation of the first one and then again integration. So, you will get e raised to power x plus 1 by x dx. Now, look at them carefully, they are same, therefore, this cancels with this, sorry I missed a constant integration. So, this is the same as this fellow and therefore, it looks x e raised to power x plus 1 by x plus c. So, certain substitutions, uh, certain uh, change of variables uh, uh, helped us in evaluating these integrals and we learnt and we saw that how we can uh, convert them into a form which is comfortable for us, which is which we can easily handle. So, uh, with this we come to the end of this lecture, uh, practice with more problems and get yourself comfortable with them. Thank you.